All right, let's talk about some basics of cells. So eukaryotic cells is what we'll focus on in this class. All eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. Human, all human cells are eukaryotic cells. Some exceptions, the no nucleus thing, right? Red blood cells actually don't have a nucleus and they are still eukaryotes. But we're not going to, the, to the, those nuances right now. We're gonna talk about the basics. So let's start off by looking at a basic eukaryotic cell. What almost all of them have, you can pause the video and label some components here. Plasma membrane, that's important. It's also called a cell membrane. The cell membrane is actually a fossil lipid bilayer. So having these two different layers drawn here, two different circles is slightly more accurate. Um, we'll get into the details of the structure of it next week. Um, it's this fossil lipid bilayer along with a bunch of proteins, which are really important, and some cholesterol. And the plasma membrane is important for separating the outside of the cell from the inside of the cell. The outside of the cell has a fluid called the extracellular fluid, or ECF. The inside of the cell has a fluid called the intracellular fluid, intra, inside, or ICF. The ICF is the same thing as cytosol. It's the aqueous fluid inside the cell. And the separation of inside and outside is important for maintaining homeostasis. There's a nucleus. The nucleus is where eukaryotic cells contain their genetic material, so DNA in this case, that has the instructions to make all the proteins that our cells need to make that vary based on what cell type it is, that cell specialization. And lastly, actually, we have the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is actually kind of a big term. It encompasses both the cytosol, what's another word for cytosol? ICF as well as all the organelles. So there's a whole bunch of organelles. I'll talk about a few today. You'll see a few in lab. We're not going to go in a whole ton of detail on a lot of them. We won't see them, most of them, with a microscope. Um, we'll kind of talk about some as we need to, um, for example, mitochondria. And so I'll introduce a couple right now. Here's, so here's the basic cell. Here's the complicated cell. A whole lot more going on here. We still have the same structure as plasma membrane nucleus contains chromatin that is actually the packaged dna and the nucleolus and then all this stuff in here is the cytoplasm so the cytosol is the aqueous um, solution in between all of the organelles and all these organelles are shown here i'm going to highlight a few um the endoplasmic reticulum there's smooth and rough Rough endoplasmic reticulum is rough because it has ribosomes. Ribosomes make proteins, so this is involved in protein production. Smooth ER, on the other hand, is more important for lipid production. So steroid hormones are going to be what um, I care about most in the smooth ER. Mitochondria are important for ATP production, so our powerhouses, and they actually I thought to actually they used to be prokaryotic cells. They have their own DNA. They don't have a nucleus. We've got the Golgi apparatus. So synthesis of carbohydrates as well as packaging of proteins in order to um, transport them out of the cell. So this vesicle right here that is being released here is actually, so all these organelles, most of them are actually also covered in membrane, plasma membrane. So the cell membrane is one of the plasma membranes. So this is actually a bit of membrane that is budding off here and is going to fuse with the cell membrane and release um, whatever it is that was produced. And we'll talk more about transport mechanisms like that next week. But the main point is Golgi apparatus vesicle packaging is one of its functions. Then we've got these cytoskeletal elements. So filaments is what I have for your key terms for now. Filaments is a pretty general term that refers to proteins that are inside the cell that are important for structure. Microtubules, intermediate filaments are shown here that actually give the cell shape. Um, myofilaments are gonna be a specialized type in muscles that we'll talk about. Um, cilia are actually another one I have in your key terms for now because we will see those quite a few times, including this week for in the trachea slides. Um, cilia are little finger-like extensions off of the cell that then can actually move around and wiggle junk out of your um, respiratory tract. I think the last one on the list, I'll check it at the end, is inclusions. Inclusions are not membrane-bound. 
their other stuff in the cell. So for example, fat in adipocytes, um, pigment such as melanin that's part of your skin and eyes and hair that gives color um, are in these areas called inclusions, which are kind of just kind of separate compartments that aren't membrane bound, but just like other stuff inside, other accumulated cell products. They either can be foreign, like bacteria or dust, or those ones I mentioned, fats and pigments that you kind of want to have inside your cell. So that is the detail of the cell. Two last things I believe that I want to talk about with basic cell stuff. One is size, one is shape. Both can vary, as you might imagine. So let's do shape first because it's, it's shown here. These are the various shapes your cells can be. Um, Squamous is squatted, cube, and columnar. These you'll see quite a bit with the epithelial tissue types. Um, and you'll see all different other shapes as well. So these would be red blood cells are discoidal. Fusiform is, would be muscle cells that are kind of spindle shaped for contraction. Smooth muscle are, are this shape. Fibrous are another important type, collagen, keratin, um, other fibrous proteins that are long. So these are the various ways that cells can change shape based on their cytoskeleton during development. And we'll see examples of a lot of these. Size can also vary. So this is a nice website that kind of gives you idea of size and scale. I recommend you can, you can go here yourself. I posted this link on Canvas. So starting from like regular font that you can read and a coffee bean, we're going to go from what you can see by eye into things you can't see by eye. Um, so grain of salt is kind of, you know, you can barely see them, but you can. So we're going in from there. Um, we're getting into some single cell organisms. So a paramecium, a human egg is a single cell. It's a big, it's a big cell. Um, skin cells are ones that you will see this week. They're epithelial cells, kind of like your basic size of a cell. That's here. So 30 microns, kind of your basic cell, opposed to a big cell. And then down in there, we've got some smaller cells, like red blood cells. They are small. They get a bunch of them packaged through your vessels. They don't have a nucleus. They don't actually don't have any organelles. So they're small. Um, they're actually about the size of a X chromosome. So then not shown here, they don't have a nucleus, but it's probably about the size, a little smaller than a red blood cell, maybe baker's yeast for, so this would be the nucleus of an epithelial cell. Um, that you will see in labs. You will see the nucleus in through the microscope, the light microscope. As we get past here, these are things you can't see with a light microscope. So we won't be seeing anything smaller than this in our class. Um, but here's a mitochondria. You can see it's about the same size as a bacteria, E. coli. And then we get into viruses. And just kind of this is good for getting the idea of size and scale of things. Um, we've got ribosomes. Hemoglobin now is a protein, right? Antibody is a protein. So we're at the protein level now. And then we've got some other biomolecules, phospholipids, an amino acid, um, a nucleotide, glucose, a six carbon molecule, and then some single, a single carbon atom. So this is kind of good to get yourself in the mind of where you are in terms of um, these molecular things. All right, so what we just did was identify and describe the various cell shapes I'll have listed there, and then also identify, describe, and draw the main parts of a eukaryotic cell and several important organelles. So being able to draw, like I had on that one slide, just the basics. That's the first two lines here. And I've listed a couple different organelles. I think we got to all those um, that I do want you to know the specific functions of. All right.